Welcome back to the San Dimas School of Film. Uh, it's pretty much four blokes who end up talking about movies anyway. My name's Al. Brad. Jules. And I'm Tim. Oh, Welcome it? back, gentlemen. It's good to see your faces again. You too, Al. Uh, <laughs> now, Timmy, you picked this film. I did. Tell us about it. Sure. Get us into it. Yeah, cool. So, it was a 2008 film. Um, so, today we're doing Moon, um, which is one of my favourites. I love Moon. Basically, it's it's pretty self-explanatory. It takes place on the moon. <laughs> um, and um, it's pretty much just essentially two characters um the whole time about a guy who's working on the moon um earth i think it's 2035 yeah, i think is like the that. year something like that so they do actually say the name at the start of it i think oh, so, so not yeah. the name the um the year, the year. Yeah, yeah i think so anyway yeah. so it's sometime in the future um in terms of energy we had to come up with a new way of of getting harnessing energy and we're harnessing it from the sun uh, and how it heats up moon rock, I think. So we're harvesting moon rock, um, which helium three. Right? Don't helium they? Aren't they? Oh. They're going for helium three. Yeah. So, sorry, can I just interrupt the synopsis for a second? Sure. <laughs> is there a history with Brad this week? Ooh. Oh, I don't think there is. Based on that, I thought this film was two thousand nine. <laughs> okay, but, but that's one year. Who cares? Who's paying attention? Mm. Uh what were you doing, Brad? Come on, throw us one on the fly. 2009, I was very drunk <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> That's it, all of 2009, just drunk? Pretty much anywhere from like 2005 to about 2011. I'll tell you <laughs> what, the Pittsburgh Penguins won the Stanley Cup. Ooh. Yeah, baby. I'm pretty sure that... Uh, That's wasn't no there another movie? <laughs> wasn't there another movie where we referenced Pittsburgh Penguins winning, winning the Cup? What was no, that? no, it was uh, the Habs. The Habs, oh, okay, like okay. 457 <laughs> yeah. Stanley Cup. You're right, sorry, it was 2009, not 2008. 2009. My mistake. Uh, also directed by Duncan Jones, who I've been a massive fan of. He's done some great... This is his first film. This is his first feature, this fucking moon. Mm. Brilliant. He's also done Source Code. Oh, I've seen bits of that. I didn't get... I haven't finished it. But... Source, is Source that? Code, Jake Gyllenhaal. He's like the the... Ex Marine or something that's on a train is in, yeah, he's on a train and he can't get out of the time loop or something oh. until he solves who blew the train up. All right, sounds good. So it's it's really like, good. Mm. So it's, it's basically like it's, it's Groundhog use... Day, but a serious version, kind of. Yeah, <laughs> all right. So it's not like you can't use tomato and barbecue together, it's not that sort of source code. No, <laughs> okay, <laughs> good. Um, oh, and Duncan Jones has also just done Warcraft. Oh, so, interesting. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, which is, choice. from what I've heard, getting rather mixed reviews. Big in China, apparently. Yeah. Oh. Good, good market to be big in. There you mm. go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, it was also made for $5 million, this film. Fantastic. Moon. 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 Which oh, is yeah, yeah. five pretty, mil. Shit, that's pretty good. Mm. That's pretty outstanding for a film. <laughs> so, like, yeah. Spare so, change. Carry on. That's right. Yeah. So, what was it? Uh, what are they... What's the energy? Uh, helium-3. Helium-3. Which... Uh, just to let people know, is actually a real thing. I was like, hmm, I want to know what helium-3 is, but apparently it's a real thing. Okay. There's something different with neutrons and, and something like that. Right. Okay. I, yeah. So, yeah, so, <laughs> appa- so apparently this way of harvesting energy um, supplies about, I think it's 70% of the world's energy mm, or something yeah, like that. that's most of it, yeah. Um, and it's a single guy, astronaut, caretaker, whatever you want to call him, um, who's basically on the moon base monitoring the machinery that's doing all the energy harvesting um and he's got a he's got a kind of a robot howl style um helper um called Ger- gertie. gertie yeah, yeah so so it's basically gertie. just the two of them um and and you know there's um basically each each caretaker has a has a three-year contract so to speak up there so um, mm. so that's basically the gist the gist of, of mm. what's going on um i really like the start of this because I love within the first like 30 seconds of the film, they give you like all the information that you need. And that's all you need. That's it. They're like, smash boom. it. You smash We're... it into a fake ad. Yeah. Right? How, like, the fake ad is awesome. Yeah. And it's so to the point. Yeah. And so, you know, full of information that you're like, yep, world's energy, helium three, bloke on the moon, rock and roll. Yeah. Yep. This is how shit you used to be. This is how awesome we are now because we've got a guy on the moon. You know, like, it's and it, great. And it's great because this whole film is just like, character right it's just 
chockers full of character. And so they get all that exposition out and done in the first bit. The mm-hmm. first, like you said, 30 seconds. Yeah, it's like real quick. And then it's just like, all right, this is this is why we're here. Let's look at this guy now. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and that's and that's I think that's the beauty of it, isn't it? Because because he's there by himself monitoring all this stuff, you don't really have anything else to fall back on except for who this guy is, what his day to day stuff is. And you know, in a general sense you kind of think about it and go, Well, it sounds kind of boring, but I don't know, just the way that Sam Rockwell, who's the main character, goes about doing his thing, he's just it just draws you in straight away. Yeah. Um and you just kind of get a glimpse in terms of what... I mean, at, at this stage, when the film starts, I mean, he's pretty much coming to close to the end of his three-year contract. So yeah, he's, I think two, he's about two, two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. So he's got about two weeks off. So um, so he's already in all, pretty much autopilot mode at this stage, just doing whatever you know he needs to do, going out, checking the harvesters, you know, out in the rover, that sort of thing, and basically just filling his time. He's also very over day. it too. Yeah, yeah. exactly right. Mm. Very over it, filling his time with you know model making and looking after little plants and all sorts of stuff. So, um, in a general sense, it seems like kind of a boring existence. But for some, I don't know how they do it, but he's just it's he's just super engaging in terms of. Because obviously by now he's talking to himself a lot. Yeah, I was going to say because it shows you his sort of slip into. <laughs> Solitary, yeah. solitariness. What's so- solitary? So- that's a game. Sol- <laughs> no, that's solitaire. <laughs> solitary. You know, but he's you know he's, he's clearly been by himself for a really long time. Like, isolation. Isolation. Uh, I was yes. going to say shiningness. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sure. Sure. But, but I like because it's really early on. Like it establishes his mental instability. Like yeah. you, you, straight away they don't beat around the bush. They're just like. Oh look, this guy's seeing stuff. You know, straight away. You're like, okay, so yeah, he's definitely been up there. I think he early on he says that he's talking to himself a lot. It's like yeah. one of the first things he he's says like, it in one of his messages. Yeah. Back to Earth. He's back like, to his wife talking or something. Talking to himself like, a yeah. lot. Yeah, absolutely. I really like that how they just straight in with it. You know, so yeah. that's um. And the, the other good thing is like going back to what you said, Brad, in terms of you know the fact that he's over it. You can tell because the first time you see him, he's like dirty as he's got his massive <laughs> beard. And he's just kind of just cruising around, just like it's, it's, like, it's like he's barely paying attention, almost. Yeah, I love it. Like again, like I'm saying, so full of character. Like straight away, all his spacesuits and stuff are dirty. Mm. Like when he goes out, you know, like to mm. out actually onto the moon, yeah. to fix stuff and whatever. Like it's dirty, and he's like, and the, spa- and the space station or whatever you call it is filthy, it's filthy. It's, it's so yeah. filthy. <laughs> I, actually, I loved it because like obviously there's really good detailing in the set. And I love the fact that you can see the um, the fact that the space station he's on is, is it's really used. Like it looks like it's been there for a really long time. How he's got the because he's got the names of the harvesters on there, and they look like they've been yeah. scribbled out and changed the names. Like it's like, but it kind of gives you that really good idea because obviously it's they're mining. Well, I think it's mining, the harvesting, whatever. Mm. But it just gives that idea of it's a sterile workplace. But obviously, when you've got miners living in it, it gets used. You know, so it. it I think the set sets the scene really well mm. without even like getting into it too much you get your commercial then the set and it's going okay this is a hard working place you know it's, it's a rough rough terrain I guess you could say yeah getting back onto the names of the harvesters though that was the one thing I liked was you know there's Matthew, Mark, Luke and John yeah. mm. and they've just they're just written in like you know permanent marker on top of the screen and I love the fact where he says oh, Luke's playing up and it's got Luke's crossed out and then Judas written next to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, okay, so the Luke one's obviously the one that's just a pain in the ass. Yeah. <laughs> He's just and so he, yeah, and he goes out on that. So that, that's pretty much when we get to look at those awesome rovers. That, oh yeah, yep. just sick looking. Are they? Uh, they're models. Are so they models? a lot, almost all of the like buildings and rovers and stuff, all model work. Yeah. Right. They're all actual models, and then and then it was uh, filled in. You know, like it's called set extending mm. um, with digital work. So there was a, there was like a, uh, I've forgotten how big it was. I didn't write it down, but there was some, you know, like 30 foot square moonscape that they would dress differently um, and drive the rovers across and, and the harvesters and the moon base and all that sort of stuff. It yeah. sounds like a real pain in the ass. Like, especially when you're dealing with a space that large. Yeah. Like, I mean, you've had experience with modeling. I mean, I, I wrote, I, I'm curious to know, like, what's the time frame on building something like that? Uh, wait, are you asking me for a quote, Jules? <laughs> a quote? <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, no, look, they, it would have, like, it would have been in pre-production, right? Like, the, 
the model building stuff that would have been in there for for months. Yeah. Um, and they would have had a team. They had a team of about six or seven blokes, I think. Okay. It depends how big it is, doesn't it? Well, it depends what the budget is. Yeah. And and because this is such a small budget, they were very. Duncan Jones was very careful about where and how he was spending the money. Mm. So he knew he wanted uh, practical vehicles and things because they're just like for 2009, I guess they were the choice. Mm. But then he realized that, you know, digital was going to save him some money in some places. And yeah. like uh, Gertie, when, when Gertie's static, Gertie's a physical prop, right? Okay. He's, he's right there. But, to move Gertie around the moon base, you know he's he's Hanging traveled from, the from a track in the ceiling. Yeah. yeah, they tried that, but but to build that track in was just going to be too costly. So anytime Gertie's moving, he's digital. Really? Ah. Yeah. Damn, they did Couldn't a they, good job of that. Could they have done that as a model though, like a small scale thing? Uh, yeah, they could have, but they weren't going to get the detail. Because, you know, like, yeah. Yeah. I suppose when you've got to superimpose it in as well, it would look like when you've got, a, I think we talked in a previous podcast about how you take two uh, real shots as opposed mm. to a, a, a CGI and superimpose them. I can't remember. I was, what yeah, because I was thinking, because I mean, I'll, I'll speak about it later because there was a bit of CGI later on that I thought was just rubbish and I, you probably know what I'm talking about. But um, so I find that because I wouldn't have picked that up at all, to be honest. No, I didn't, did not realize. I was like, I was actually really impressed that they'd built this track yeah, in this robot. Yeah, I thought it was just a... Because it rocks around and mm. it's... I was like, wow, they... Okay, so clearly the budget was for uh, a bit of CGI, but... Mm. So beautiful. What do they do for... Okay, so you're saying they, they have a small area and then they obviously, what, they green screen it at the back or something, do they? Is that how it works with the... Because you said they, no, they put... They, they, they'll take a... They'll take an empty plate, so... They'll remove Sam Rockwell, okay, and take just an empty frame, and then composite composite the oh sorry digital. I I was more referring to the um like the the you know big vast shots of the vehicles on the moon like traveling oh, yeah like the background space shots what are they green screen yeah, they have they'll, a set and then a green screen yeah in the back they'll be the, green okay. in the background yeah cool mostly it's usually green just where the where the uh, moon horizon. Oh, yep. meets, yeah, right? yeah. So, because that's the bit you've got to get out. Everything above that, you can just kind of cut out. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. I'm making lots of hand gestures here. <laughs> Sorry, we get it. audience. We get it. Oh, yeah. well, cool. Without getting too bogged anyway. down in it, but yeah, no, that's cool. But no, I had no idea about the the Gertie like being CGI at all. I was convinced the whole movie that that he was there, that it well, was they there. Built like, him and he was just cruising around. Yeah, yeah, did a great job. So then it comes to the the twist. I guess. Should we talk about it? Well, no, spoiler maybe alert? Oh, yeah. just a few things to start spoiler. with before we get to that. Sorry. Obviously, this whole episode is going to be covered with spoilers anyway. Yeah. Um, so there's a couple of weird things, obviously, that we noticed at the start. First yeah. one is that he can only communicate via recorded messages and he's only on the moon. Like, this isn't interstellar here. I mean, he's he's yeah. literally just there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we're in a... I'll get back onto this later. When, yeah. Okay. Oh. Um... I'm excited. So that's yeah. the first thing. Obviously, the second thing is some of the messages are a bit weird. Like, there's a lot of glitches going on mm. and just some weird stuff. Like, you know, has stuff been cut out? Or, yeah, it's one of his wife. Something. He's talking with his... Or he's received a message yeah. from his wife and it kind of cuts. And he, he calls Gertie at that time. Does he? Yeah. Why? So the, it cuts and he sort of looks around and he calls Gertie and Gertie doesn't come and he just goes, no, he can yeah. just keep yeah. going on with it. Oh, yeah. And the too. other thing is when he starts seeing this woman... Um, his wife, I think, sitting in the mm. chair. Um, mm. He also saw her while he was out looking. It's not his wife. It's his daughter. Is it? Well, I couldn't remember. From the, from the shot of the girl sitting in the chair, she's got long dark hair. Yeah, that's... and then I don't know because because the daughter's supposed to be like fifteen. Yeah, no, but we never but... actually see the girl probably. But it's not his wife because his wife's got short blonde that's hair, long hair. Yeah. and yeah. this girl in the chair has got long dark hair but, like his daughter. Uh, does. But that's another weird thing because again, when like he doesn't, he lies to Gertie about it. So he's he obviously is thinking that that's part of his isolation or something like yeah. that as mm. well. Um, so there's a few things that are starting to, that are going on there, and you're just like, oh, hang on, what's actually happening here? Yeah. Um, and then obviously when he's going out to inspect one of these um, harvesters. He then sees the woman in the dust and ends up crashing, mm. crashing the rover. And then obviously this whole thing just starts from there. Hmm. So, what I love is there's a period in this film 
it's not very long, but there's a period where after the stack and then Sam wakes up, there's a period where we're still with Sam. Yep. We don't actually know what's happened, right? And then we meet the other Sam. So, obviously, I've seen this before because <laughs> I love this film too. Once or twice. So, if you know what's coming, mm. and obviously everybody does because you've seen it, mm. uh, there are there are little subtle differences. Like, all of a sudden, his spacesuit's really clean. Right? Like, he's got a whole new set of spacesuit mm. and... And well, he, he looks to where the where his normal one was, and it's not there. And it's not there, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, all these like tiny little things before the next Sam shows up. Well, for me, and the, the hand. What about his hand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see that? Do you see? But that then as well? I, see, I was questioning this too when I saw it, and I was like, okay, well, maybe he's been there for a long time. Yeah, but, but see, this is what I love yeah, about it because that it's was like good. we're still in the dark about what's happening. But it was more for me of like. You know, he's he's on this table, he's clean, he's in different clothes. And it's like, and I know Gertie's like, you know, a robot with, you know, all these bits and pieces, but I went, you know, it's an unconscious person that's, you know, for a bunch of, you know, fully articulated human beings. It's, it's well, hard that's to something else an we need to get person. to as well. So that's when I went, oh, hang on, what's going on here? Mm. That's when I started to click a little bit that, okay, this everything's not what it seems to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, so I thought, good. I thought it was great because, like, you know, it takes... This, this, one of the cool things about this movie is it takes that standard Hollywood drama. Like, you know, you always expect the big twist right at the end of the film. You know, you're always like, that's it. You, the, the big climax is right at the end of the film. That's when the big twist happens. You're like, wow, this is like, I made a note of it. 28 minutes in and boom. We get a big twist. Big twist. Yeah. You're like, whoa. And you know, again, like, mm. it goes back to that, like how much this film is about character because it's not about us reacting to the twist. It's not about us reacting to what the company has done to Sam. It's about how Sam reacts to yeah. this happening yeah. around him. Yeah. Right? And it's and that's what we're there to watch. That's what we're there to see. Which is, you know, I guess why it happened so early. So we can see all that unfold. Yeah. And one of the... I, I like the, the character differences between the two. Yeah, I mean, like... They're two just, completely different people. Yeah. I mean, you got to say, like, Sam, Sam Rockwell, like... Amazing. Awesome. So good in this, right? So, so basically but, what, yeah, so he's, so he wakes up and he gets out of bed before he should be getting out of bed yeah. and stumbles upon Gertie speaking live to yeah. mm. to the, what were they called? The, the, the company. The, the, the business. <laughs> it's, the, it's the bloody boss from the bush. It yeah, is. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my God. What's his name? He goes um, to the tundra. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I can't think of his name right now. I know. What's it? it so, so no, no, but yeah. So at that stage, and then obviously there's this whole weirdness with Gertie about not letting him outside, and all this sort of stuff. And it's that point where you're like, "What is? Hang on a minute. This is a bit effed up." Mm. Um, but the fact is, I love when all that happens, and you know, he brings his himself back in, mm. and it's he's acting really odd, like. It's a weird moment because it's not like he's freaking out. He's just... He's so, like, cool. The, like, the he, new Sam? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, new Sam's... But even old Sam... I've, I called them new Sam and old Sam the whole time. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Old Sam, at the start, before new Sam woke up, so to speak... No, sorry. Sorry. Hang on. B- no. New Sam... <laughs> yeah, new Sam before old Sam woke back up... Yeah. Was super... Yeah, super cool... Just kind of like, this guy's in trouble. He looks exactly like me, but he's in trouble, blah, blah, yeah, blah. got to help him. Yeah. Um, and I just... It was that kind of weird moment where even though you know that they're the same dude, you're still sitting there going... See, what I really dug about it... Ooh, sorry. <laughs> is one of the many things I dug about it is we spend the first 20 minutes on Sam, right? And that's our main character. Old Sam. Old Sam. Yeah. Now, when they introduce new Sam, we suddenly switch to the... The film is now following new Sam, right? And old Sam, who was the main character, is now the secondary character, right? Mm. And that line blurs from scene to scene. So, sometimes old Sam is the main character and and we're following his story and his reactions... But then other times, 
and and how he's reacting to new Sam. Mm. You know, there are a couple of scenes there where new Sam's a bit of a jerk. Yeah. Mm. Right? But because he's the other character, he's not the main character that we're watching, we're very much on old Sam's side then. Mm. Yeah. Right? But then it flips around and we're suddenly on new Sam's perspective and we're like, oh, you know, like what's going on with old Sam? Oh, you know, like, and he's the secondary yeah. character. And it's just this like really subtle shift in perspective. But that I, first that first scene when um, old Sam gets up and new Sam's skipping, so it's that first time they interact. Yeah, yeah. And it's a it's such a weird interaction because they're almost sussing each other out and avoiding the truth. That yeah, they're, that they're the same dude. Yeah. So they're kind of just like, yeah. So you know, how are you? And all this sort of stuff. And I definitely just, think old Sam is far more engaging than new Sam because like old Sam comes out well, and he's is. like, he's like, hey man, what's up? Yeah, because blah, blah. old and, Sam's been there for three years. Yeah. yeah. And he's had no interaction. And so all he of a wants sudden, it. He wants yeah, that interaction. He's like, hungry for and this it. is a, I think one of the big biggest character differences between the two is the fact that new Sam, like he, they give you little clues throughout the film that. Uh, I don't know, the original Sam, whoever Sam Bell is as, as a whole, before he came up to the moon, was a bit of a dick. He used to lose his cool. He was a really angry dude. So when they wake up a new Sam, he's that character. He he's is. that pissed off guy. Yeah. But obviously at the end of the, what is it, a three-year cycle mm. when, the, when the Sams are you know coming towards the end of the thing. Obviously at that point, old Sam is like total zen. You know, yeah, And that, that's the biggest kind of character difference is that you know old Sam is this totally relaxed like zen guy. Uh, but new Sam is a real dick and that's, I like the, the character differences between the two and yeah. that obviously would play a big part on how they're going to re- react with each other. Well, there's a big, there's a big, uh, uh, it's called nature versus nurture, you know, with, uh, parenting. Hmm. It's like, is, is someone the product of their environment or is it just how they were always going to be? Hmm. And that's a really perfect example of that. Like Sam wakes up, new Sam wakes up hmm. and he's, he's a certain way. But old Sam is three years older mm. and been there by himself and has been broken down, I guess. Had some time to think. Yeah. <laughs> and, the, and the thing is, even after all that, he still has to go to Gertie and ask him if he's a clone. Like, this is like yeah. the yeah. whole... That that scene kind of got me a lot because when Gertie started, just he just started talking about it. And you're just watching Sam just like, I'm not... This is real oh, now. Like this is, It is so... Oh, I wrote that down. Uh, there's something, there something about that scene, the way they did the yeah. music and all sorts of stuff. It is in there. so heartbreaking. It is. It's brutal. Yeah. Sam it's, just like, oh, the like you. Oh, I love it. It's yeah. so I mean, good. Like you just. I love the fact that it's torn apart. The beauty is that Gertie doesn't have a whole lot of emotional investment. He's he's re- he's See, played as a robot uh, really well. I have weird <clears throat> things about Gertie, but I mean, look, we'll get into that. But I. Um, well, I'm because the. The biggest thing is obviously like, you know, Gertie is obviously under instruction by the business. Don't give anything away. And maybe he's kind of become attached to Sam. So when Sam's like, dude, you need to tell me the truth. Am I a clone? And then Gertie's like, you are a clone, blah, blah, blah. And he spills the beans, right? And I'm like, is he doing that because he's getting a direct order from a, from an officer? Or is he getting that on an emotional level? Is so he helping out his friend? It, yeah. I, if you watch, Gertie is on Sam's side the whole time. Mm. It doesn't matter which Sam it is, mm. but he's always there to help Sam, right? And he, he even says something like that at one point. He's like, oh, he I'm here to help. Times. Yeah, I'm like, I'm here to help you. And you can see him like when when one of the Sams asks him a direct question, he's like, yeah, man. Like, you know, we're spending all this time together. They obviously yeah. know each other. Yeah. So he's like, yeah, well, you know, this is, this is how it goes because I'm here to look after you, like... Oh, it's yeah, it's really good. It's just well, it's, all these, it, like subtle. It's interesting with because obviously they use the emojis on the screen uh, to mm. show his um, what do you call it? Um, emotions, like, yeah. expressions. His thank you. Emojis. His emojis for his emotions. Um, there's one shot like because obviously you know if you've never seen the film, if you're watching it for the first time, you're like, oh, is this robot a dick? Is this hell from 2001? Uh, you're like, wow, is this is this robot? Which was very heavily modeled on. <laughs> yeah, ab- absolutely. This whole film. And you kind of like, oh, but there. I reckon there's this one distinct moment where I'm like, wow, this this robot is a dick, and he's gonna be a dick. Obviously, you know, time tells a different story. But and it's it's a single camera pan, and I've I've just written it here. So, um, Sam, old Sam is asking, or one of the Sams is asking uh, Gertie to pass on a message to uh, to home, you know, to to the business. Uh, and instead, what happens is the camera pans up from this happy emoji face, 
and it actually pans off the emoji face and it specifically focuses on the little camera. And that's it. So you yeah. lose that that like happy face, that happy connection, and it's the camera literally pans up, you lose that, and it just, yeah, specifically focuses, focuses on that camera. And you're like, well, that's it. For me, the first time I watched it, I was like, well, that's oh, it. You're going to die, yeah, You're going to die, Sam. <laughs> this this robot is going to kill you, man. This robot is an asshole because all of a sudden it's just removed all of ill emotion and it just seems like lights and clockwork because of that one that's camera that shot. One. That's what got me, just that yeah. one pan up. Mm. And I was like, ooh. But obviously, you know, time tells and it's, it's really good. Gertie turns out to be a really cool guy and... <laughs> Like well, beers right, with him later, and you know, but, but yeah, uh, yeah, so. but yeah, um, and that's something with Gertie, and I think we can get into it a bit later in terms of towards the end, but um, but that's I still I still keep coming back to that scene because you've got Sam who's been there for so long and has always known that whole time that he's only there for a certain amount of time and that there's this other life waiting for him, and this is the moment where he's told otherwise. Oh. And it's just, and, and, and I think the way the film has gone has served that brilliantly because the very next scene is basically old Sam not giving a shit Yeah, because new totally Sam's trying to talk like, to him and he keeps, turning, he keeps turning the music back on just like, nope, not <laughs> yeah. listening to you, you know? He's and, just completely broken now. Yeah. He's got nothing to live for mm. and he's just like, whatever. Yeah. Oh, it's... Oh. I'm going to listen to Katrina and the Waves. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Mm. Um, uh, there's a few things that, I don't know, for me, I felt a bit weird in this film. So obviously we're set a fair way into the future, but why does Gertie still look like something from the 1970s? Sort of looks like, you know, a Commodore 64 <laughs> with a microwave. <laughs> Um, and a cup of coffee. And I, I, I love the, no, the, the dirtiness of the scenes and the fact that everything's covered in crap. Yeah. I love that. I thought that was really yeah. cool. The fact he does have a big coffee stain down the side yeah. and like a post-it note stuck to the front of him saying, <laughs> you know, check this. Yeah. I like that. And the kick me on the back. And the kick me on the back. Yeah, yeah that yeah. was pretty funny. But I think maybe, but, surely he looks like that for a reason. I think he'd probably look like know. that because he needs to be robust because no one's going up there. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. No. I don't know. I just found that it was sort of... But then, it's, again, it's also one of those things where, you know, with the future stuff, we live in a world of what we believe Hollywood you know, has. Mm. So I just thought that was a bit strange that he really did look like something from... I, know, I, I kind of Something that wouldn't have been built now, you know what I mean? Like, like so many movies have like, oh, how's the ro- how are we going to represent the robot? Oh, let's do it with a hologram. And, uh, and oh, bullsh- no, I'm really bullshit glad that like that. Yeah, I yeah, love yeah. the fact that it's a big mechanical clunky piece I of think, shit yeah you know, it's like, a combination of Jules what you were saying before and what you said just then Timmy about yeah. he's got to be robust because yeah. this whole thing has to run effectively by itself by one person and be easy yeah. to fix and maybe yeah. maybe they the company spent two years running tests on people on who responded to what robot designed the best and this is the one that that came out trumps. Actually, you know what? I've got a good example of crappy uh, technology that's still used today. So let's hey, hey, hey. maybe... I work for the automotive industry. We uh, make money off crappy technology. This is exactly right. Okay, so hang on. So maybe maybe Gertie is just old hardware that it was, hey, outdated for planet Earth. Uh, they put him on the moon because they, ah, stuff it. That technology will grow up there. We'll give it a new bit of software, whatever. And it's the same with um, McLaren at the moment. So yeah, they're yeah, coming. The, the F1 car. Uh, using they're using bloody... like laptops from the early nineties yeah, because it's the it's only, the thing, only that thing that yeah, works. Yeah. You know, like so maybe it's the same kind of deal. Maybe Gertie is just an outdated piece. Yeah, he's, he's a reliable piece He's of not technology. trying to update to Windows ten every <laughs> day. <that, laughs> yeah, exactly. And, but that's what it needs to be in that environment. Yeah, like maybe. maybe it's just something that needs a few tweaking from Sam here and there. Mm-hmm. But the rest of the time, it's trusted to be able to just do the job without looking pretty. The other things that didn't work for me was, once again, it's 2030. Why is he okay with the fact that the messages are taking so long to get from Earth to the moon? Yeah, that's what you said. Recorded and things. That was a bit weird for me. And the the thing that blew me the most is, like, the guy's been on this thing with just him and Gertie for three years. All of a sudden, there's this other guy Mm. that looks exactly like him. Yeah. And he's like, oh, hey, man. But I mean, that that no, could have sorry. a lot to do with his mental instability. Yeah, you know, if he's having yeah. if he's yeah. having visions. Yeah, he's prior he's to already that. seeing people. He's talking to himself, and he all of a sudden he's just looking at himself. <laughs> and Gertie doesn't help him because he says, yeah. "Who's that guy?" And he goes, "That's, That's Sam, Sam Bell." 
But I love that. Just, I love the anyway, brutal so honesty because it's, it's yeah, maybe nothing. I am seeing something. You know, weird, <laughs> but yeah. I just thought that, like if if you'd been somewhere for three years and there was all of a sudden this other guy there that looked exactly like you, without having a twin. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think maybe you'd probably freak out. A little bit. Oh well, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Like, could be a, one of those moments where you're like, you're a little bit afraid. You're a bit unsure. If you freak out, it could just you know exacerbate the situation. You know, like if you're like, I'll just play this really easily, assess the situation. I won't lose my shit just yet. Find out what the deal is, whether it's maybe my own mind is cracked or whatever. You know, who who knows? Like maybe he's just tiptoeing because he's all he he says at one point when he's in the fight with you know, when the two Sands are in the fight, he's like, man, I'm a lover, not a fighter. So he's just prodding. You know, he's like he's seen it rather than freaking out and tearing up the joint. He's just going, oh, I'm just gonna just suss this out. Let's just let's just play this and see where it goes. You know, like. Trying to figure it out. And plus, he knows he's going soon too. So maybe yeah. there's something right. in that in terms of whether well, he's, he thinks... he's definitely going because that's probably the first time we actually see that uh, old Sam is really starting to decay. That's yeah. a, and that's mm. a, one of the other real hard Fast. things about this so film hard. is watching Sam fall apart. Go fall apart. <laughs> it is real. I was really uncomfortable. Yeah, watching. and it's it's also in, like not that I'm up to date on any form of modern cloning. But, uh, you know, it obviously seems to be something that's built into them because it happens really quick, like mm. in a week. Mm. I, I would actually say that it's a case... See, if, the way I pictured it, it's not actually a case of um, they've designed it to deteriorate at three years. I'd say it's a case of they could only get it to last three yeah. years. Mm. That's the way I envisioned it, like, as opposed to the other way around. Like, it's like, man, yeah, it lasts almost three years, but in that last week, man, it goes to shit. You know, so, uh, maybe that's the way I saw it, but I don't know. Maybe, yeah, maybe they do limit it how long they keep it because, you know, I guess they look how long, how long could one human really be on a station alone with a computer for? Like, mm. Uh, mm. not too sure. But. Well, because you put yourself in that position so quickly at the start of the film. Oh, yeah. You're like, man, he's been there three years with just Gertie. Like, how would I, you know, I'd be going crazy too. I'd be talking to plants and mm. you know, all that sort of stuff. Mm. Um, the first, the first shot of them interacting, of the two Sams interacting, it's is where when, is one of them's on the speedball. No, it's the... one of them. It's when they're playing uh, ping pong. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, and it and it feels like, it feels like a deliberate. All right, everyone, are you watching this? Because yeah. we're gonna do this. This is you know, it's like it feels like a real show off <laughs> shot, mm. but yeah. it's so hot, it's so <laughs> impressive, and you know, like he crosses the table and they pick up things that put that the other guy puts down and yeah like there's all yeah it's just there is lots of really good like dual character interaction yeah where, oh, it's like, not, it gets... and the fight scene's not even the best one there's lots of other things where it's like i can't even remember but there was one scene i picked up straight away and went oh that was done really well so and he's, he like touches his face or yeah. something or... he's like brushing his hair out of the way yeah, and he does yeah, his yeah. Zip yeah. Up. it's an actual it's an actual same shot with two of them right there and he actually moves something on the other character that is obviously him yeah, yeah. I mean, and that the, was done really well and yeah. the the characters i wrote this down like right towards the end the, the both characters even though they're the same like clone mm. both characters are so different but so strong that you totally forget that it's Sam Rockwell. Yeah, it's the one guy. It's Sam and Rockwell that, doing it twice. That's what I was going to say. Like, no. I, after a while, I'm just like, I just, you just kind of accept it and go, it's, it, this is happening, and you forget that it's the same dude. And I love it. And that's, that's the place of digital effects. These, like, mm. it's serving the character so strongly. It's not just like dinosaurs tearing apart a park. Thank you. <laughs> it's, and it, and it makes you forget. Like, you know, you, you talk about, good work in in filmmaking mm. and it's work that you as an audience member shouldn't notice like if someone's a good editor if you don't notice the cuts happening right it just feels like one piece of film that yeah, you're watching yeah you're right? doing your job the acting so like you know if the acting's good you're not thinking about the actor i'm not sitting there going man sam rockwell's good i was this time around because we were watching it but you're sitting there going, that's Sam, that's old Sam, and that's new mm. Sam. You're not mm. thinking about like, And all of that stuff has just come together so strongly in this film mm-hmm. that I'm, I'm lost in this film every mm. time. It's... So how do they do the... Because obviously you've had some experience in film. 
<laughs> Such a broad brushstroke. <laughs> let's uh, let's say that you had. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I, right, I have watched many films. So too. let's. You've, you've had experience in film. You look. You brought the real guys their coffees. All right. <laughs> no, okay. <I'm laughs> I'm I'm he, he watched the special edition DVDs of Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Twice. But, but, but in reality, okay. So you. So it's a lot. You've of... had a lot of effects uh, experience. The ping pong scene. Yeah. How do you achieve something like that? So some of it's like so basically Sam. Sam Rockwell yeah. does one, right? Yep. And I think he was doing, it was generally, it was, so each, each of those scenes has a leading character. Okay. So in that one where he's zipping up, you know, zipping up and brushing the hair out of his face, yep. new Sam is the lead character in that scene, right? So they shoot that one first and Sam Rockwell gets his blocking and, you know, and they, they do that. Then he goes off to the makeup chair for three hours or whatever it is. <laughs> While that's happening, they take an empty plate, like just no one in it, so they can rub bits out. And so it's like the same shot, yeah, without any character. So it's just yep. a shot of the it's set, just an empty set. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then old Sam comes back, and and he's watched. So then he watches the video a couple of times to get the blocking. Oh, and they yep. rehearse it a bit, and then. He does his second bit, and then they composite it all together. Some of it's done with body doubles as well. Mm. Yeah, like so, the back of the head shots. Yeah, a lot of the like back yeah. of the head shots are just so he can act to someone. Um, but yeah, and then it's just compositing. It's just okay. people. The body double is actually... I looked at IMDb to see the characters. And, and and one good thing I loved about this is that there really are hardly any actors in this yeah. film. Yeah. But the body double actually is it's like a really good body double. Like yeah, nice. in, Even on, with like a frontal shot to change his face, to if they you know digitally do the face... Is ri- there's not a lot to do. Not a lot. No, no. Awesome. He's, yeah, it was actually really good. Yeah, mm. um, I, I've been yeah, good casting. Um, you know, Timmy, before you were talking about the scene when Gertie lays it all out, mm. just how heartbreaking it is. Mm. There's another scene like that when <gasps> he's watching the old Sams get burnt. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, and oh, I can't even. Yeah. And what? because it's because it's a couple of things. It's it's him knowing that that's how what's ha- like it's slow. It's sinking in. Okay, this yeah. is what's going on. They're all sick, so they've all got the same symptoms. Yeah, and, uh, it's so hard to watch. Uh, I just yeah. yeah. That's I, how Mel. I literally wrote. Don't usually get too involved in characters' emotions, but. Really feel sorry for this Sam guy's by really himself. Really feel sorry for him, you know. He's by his goddamn self. He's got no one he can run to or yeah. anything. Like this is he can't even go outside. No, no, he's like, it's one of the things that I like. I with if if I know a movie's really good, I walk out of it feeling a bit weird sometimes. <laughs> um, and I when I first saw this, I felt really weird after, and I thought about it and I dwelled on it for a while. Because the film does so well in displaying the isolation, the feeling of isolation that's... And it's not so much, you know, bang at the start, you're isolated. There's this slow build of isolation. Mm. So it just keeps compounding itself. So at the start, you're like, oh, you know, he's he's fairly cheery and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then things start to happen. You're like, oh, God, this is getting a bit like, you know, he's, he's, he's on his own or... Oh, he's really on his own. Mm. Oh, he's oh, actually he's fucked. Like yeah. you know, and then it just it just keeps building and building to the point where you're like, like how like how do you even cope with that? I don't even know how yeah. you. I I I've got a really rubbish analogy. I liken it, you know, uh, the whole concept in the Matrix of when they upload, you know, and he's like, oh, now I know kung fu, mm. like that rush of information. Well, you picture that but it's your whole existence crashing down around you, like in that yep. bang, in that rush of information. Mm. It's just like, oh. Devastating Ooh. blow. Like, wow, this has happened a lot. I am, I don't even know what number I am. Yeah, well, like he's num- not even. Like, what number am I? Like, yeah. But, uh, so I think you can kind of reference how long they've been doing it. I think I figured out that he's only like the fourth or fifth one because... They've been doing it for, I think, the logs. When he goes back and watches the video logs, 
uh, of all the other Sams. I think they only go back to like 2015. Well, you do it by his daughter's age. <laughs> his daughter's around so about... Yeah, his daughter's oh, yeah, about of 15, course. And so, she yeah. would have been about one or two in mm. the video logs, maybe? Yeah. 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 Like so, you know, there's probably about four, yeah, so four if, cycles. Yeah, there. so if they last, if it lasts, yeah, four years. But, but then, he didn't three, know that sorry. at that stage, though. No. That's true. Like, he, he had no idea how many oh. had gone um, before him. Well, and, the daughter would have to be maybe a bit over three. If he's there and it's his daughter. Oh, yeah, true. Because yeah. I'm pretty sure she hasn't been up there. Yeah. With him. And is it his daughter? Well, well, technically not his. It's the real Sam Bells because the real Sam Bells back on Earth but, during the phone call. Yeah, but you're relying on <laughs> what he's being fed through this system. Mm. Like, they may be real people, but. Oh, so you're saying they're like actors. Like the daughter, well, the, or all that nah, stuff is actually that's the original messages sent to the original Sam Bell. But see, we don't but even know it, if original Sam Bell ever went to the moon. Correct, right? right. And I'm willing to bet he's never been. Yeah, mm-hmm. like Sam Bell could be living, just still living with you, the. Family. No, I reckon he did. I am gonna say that he did go to because you know the wife, the real wife, and the you know sends the the messages to the moon. To Sam Bell, surely she's not in. Like, no, but the only why, way. Why would he go to the moon if he's got clo- if they're going to clone him to do the job for it? Yeah, there's no reason for him no to be. I'd go on the theory go. that they're actors because when you see the daughter, she's like very pale skin with bright white blonde hair, and then when he actually calls her, she's almost like olivey skin with very dark hair. Maybe that's just their way of representing. Regards, we don't even know we that that's know. his family. We don't even know. Like yeah. it's been displayed as his family. It has been somehow incorporated into his memory that that's his he family. He has sexy dreams about. But this we have family. no uh. goddamn idea if that's his family or if that's just something that's been set up to keep him because doing re- his job. Remember, in one of the video logs, there's a, like someone saying something off camera. Yes, like someone's coaching her. Yeah, so, okay, so, yeah, obviously there's this whole thing about blocking signals and the, the two Sams team up to go out mm. and go beyond where they're supposed to go in terms of their um, their range with the rovers. And obviously they find these, you know, these antennas that are blocking signals and that sort of thing. And they regain their uh, reception. Mm. It's like yeah, being he, on Vodafone. He rips one down. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and obviously that's when old Sam calls, calls home. Calls home. Sam. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, who is that off camera that's talking to his daughter? Yeah. Like, is, is that it someone Sam? from the company? Is it is Sam? Is that Sam? No, nah, but it is. Cause it's, you listen. All right, look, I mean, without being giving it a definitive 100% guarantee that it is, you listen to it and it sounds, like him. It sounds exactly like him. Yeah. And obviously, uh, you know, um, Sam Bell up on the moon who's making the phone call, like, that's a live feed. Uh, and you know, he's, he's like, you know, what happened to mum? And then you know, the daughter's like, dad, someone's asking about mum. Like it, I think it gives you enough information to say, yeah. Um, oh shit, what's, my, what's my point? Like, yeah, I just, I, I just don't think they're being coached. I don't think they're being, um, I don't think they're actors. I reckon this is the real Sam Bell's family. There is a real Sam Bell who's still chilling, chilling out on earth. That could still be some other guy though. It might not. That be is Sam. true. Like it, she, she could be calling dad whoever. Yeah, but I mean, he, he talks though. Sense. You hear him. No, you hear him. It's it's definitely like the real Sam Bell okay. in the background. Yeah. Right, okay. Where and did you get the number from? Uh. I don't know. Well, in memory he, implants. Yeah, he's just <laughs> like, like gonna he's gonna ring Well, um. Yeah, but I mean, the, the reason I think that uh, the real Sam went to the moon is because to gain all of the experience that uh, the clone Sam is going to need and to get all of those video logs, I seriously reckon that they would have to have a real life situation actually play out. And then the reason the videos chop and change as he's watching them is because obviously the clone Sam isn't going to be say the exact same things and messages. So what they're doing is they're taking the real videos editing them and then sending them back up as, hey, this is a message from your wife. So they have the memories of his wife and they have this wife sending all these loving messages and saying, hey, you know, you, uh, you're a real dick and, <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, you know, like they have these real life conversations and obviously they just, you know, someone's editing them, chopping and changing them to meet what the clone is sending because they're all going to send similar kind of things. 
Uh, yes, I, I, I reckon that the real Sam Bell definitely went to the moon and that was his job. No. And no, See, I reckon if they can clone someone, they could program whatever the hell they want in there. Yeah, I suppose. Like maybe Sam did a, a particular amount of training. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe there's actually. A chi- maybe they put a chip in him. I don't know. Well, no, actually, you're right. Because there is a point where he's like the new Sam or old Sam when, when Gertie's spilling the beans to him. And he's like, I have memories of my family. And Gertie actually says they're memory implants. Yeah, they're implants. Yeah. Okay. So who the hell does he call? <laughs> <laughs> and where do you get the number? And where do you get the number? Well, he knows the number. Surely they would have just implanted well, a disconnected number or something. Or something to the... But why would he know the number if they've implanted his memories? He's in an area where he can't call anyone. So how did he get the number to call his family? It's a pretty good guess. Yeah. Maybe that's just something that's left over as part of the... <laughs> and if, if they're going to have actors answer the Stop. phone, I don't think leaving it up to a 15-year-old is a very good idea. Stop pulling apart this great <laughs> film, Brad. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and no. Was it a collect call? Because I'm sure a collect call from the moon is Ooh, pretty expensive. Oh, they even do collect no, calls I, anymore? Yeah, oh, that's it. 1-800-REVERSE. You know? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. And he's going to be there for half an hour and be so. like, nine seven six <laughs> zero zero one. <laughs> What's the area oh, code on. for the moon? Oh, stuffed it up. And hang up. Start again. Yeah. yeah exactly. What is the <laughs> area, the area code, code for the moon? Yeah, it wasn't one of those old dial phones. <laughs> yeah, dick, 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 you know, the corporation are looking into it. That's what Gertie tells Sam. Now, it's like, has it been like that for three years? Like, has it been offline for three years? Like, surely, because he only seems to be like, hey, they need to make this yeah, a priority. And fix this. And like, did he get there? And in, for three years, there's been no live feed when it mm. seems like a fairly easy, easy problem. Gertie says, it's just not that high of a priority list, Sam. And it's like, well, for three years, surely at some point, you know, got to it. they would have... Um, you know, surely, like, they couldn't just string it out for three years and, oh, look, the comms are having problems. Well, what's he going to do? <clears throat> That's a good point. <laughs> but he he really seems to Stop. make a big fuss about it in the last two weeks. Like, it's only been a short problem. So surely he would have, at some point, had some kind of live communication. Otherwise, I'm led to believe that for three years, he's had no issues. And then when he's finally getting sent home, that's when it becomes a real issue for him. And I'm like, why in the last two weeks would that really bother you? I mean, obviously, everything's kind of going pear shaped on him in the last two weeks, but I, I mean, I, am I wrong in thinking it'd be strange for, no, for no, three that's, years? That's a legitimate concern. Mm. Mm. It has me. Maybe puzzled. they maybe they kind of filter it a bit. I I, I think this is just well, one of these things where that editing comes in. Possibly, maybe yeah. those glitches that he was seeing. Yeah, you know, we just start. that's it. They're representing it in a way that looks like a live feed or isn't. Mm. I, I don't know. Yeah. Because, like, surely for three years, you'd want to have a live conversation with your newborn daughter or, or whatever. Or maybe they literally did stream along for three years and say, dude, this is a really big problem. We got solar flares come in, the solar winds are kicking up, and the helium-3 is interrupting the gamma rays from, you know, quasar Earthions, and who knows? I don't know, but... Wow, he's really yeah. smart. <laughs> Actually, I do have a, a, another question about the communication system. Why the hell do they call it Jupiter Link? Can anyone answer that? Like, is there a legitimate... Do they cover I this? I don't think it anyway. matters. <laughs> like, they, it's, you know, it's just... You're ruining it. Stop tearing apart my film. <laughs> no, no, no. Why is anything called anything? Well, I mean, that's true, but, like, Jupiter's nowhere near the moon, and I, as far as I know, the moon's a lot closer to Earth than Jupiter is. Well, well, steady on, <laughs> Mr. Science. <laughs> I think... Where are the facts? All right, we're getting a tape measure out. <laughs> Have you noticed how quiet we all are right now? <laughs> yeah, I'm just. I don't mean to. Don't mean to like you know disassemble the film, but I'm. I'm just curious. Like that was one of the first. I'm, it's like one of my first comments. But maybe Jupiter ma- Link. Maybe Jupiter is the name of the satellite. Oh, that's a possibility. That's right. Because he's is he on the back side of the moon or the front side of the moon? Is well, he this is. I suppose the moon spins. Well, he's not on the side facing the Earth, so the dark side. Well, yeah, that's a slight hole because he sees the sun. He says. He says somewhere in the film it says he's on the dark side, mm. which is why communication is difficult. But there are several shots of him like staring up at the earth. There's heaps of light, too. ah, and there's a lot of light. <clears throat> well, you get light. Maybe that's part of the communication argument. Possibly. Well, this um, and this. How often does the 
you know, what's what's a what's a one you know, full rotation of the Earth uh, of the Moon take? Do we know how fast the Moon spins? It doesn't spin. It doesn't at all. No, it's locked to the Earth. Mm. But it does, so there's no that's rotation. Why there's a, that's why there's a dark side. Mm. So that, but there, it the never rotates. Side. But no, well, still, the, dark, the dark side does see the sun every now and again. Yeah, it's, it's still spinning around because the eclipse. Earth is spinning. Right. Yeah, that's when we see get, an eclipse. I could get really. Uh, so okay, so the, the moon. It's a thing. <laughs> wires. <laughs> um, so the moon's spinning around the Earth, but the but, but the moon itself isn't. The moon doesn't spinning. spin. Really? The, but it, the if, moon it orbits. Orbits it doesn't the Earth. Spin. But it orbits. We also we always see the same side of the moon, no matter where you are. We never see the back of the moon. Really? Or the dark side. As the pink, dark side. As but pink that's the thing. Floyd it's it's not actually the dark side of the moon because fifty percent of the time light. it's cop and light. Yeah, no, it's called the dark side because <laughs> it's cop and light. there's you, because during the Apollo missions you couldn't get radio signal. Yeah. Mm. Ah. And that could be a reason we have so many radio kit problems. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. That's maybe, all right. Look, maybe. I mean, it's it's a it's a possibility. So. Cool, cool, cool. Um, Amazing. <laughs> We're getting technical on this one. Yeah, this is really technical. You asked us questions you knew we had no answer to. <laughs> I, I, I was so. just curious. Just curious to I'm see not what even you on guys the boat, think let alone about in the wheelhouse. <laughs> <laughs> so, you asked that question and three dudes went, huh? Uh, <laughs> sorry. So, so, okay, so getting back to it. So all this stuff is, is happening and now they're starting, because they're working together, they're formulating this plan. New Sam comes up with a brilliant plan of waking up another Sam. Yeah, let's get another let's one. Let's get up. another one. Let's up. have a Sam Multi-Sam. party. Multi Sam. <laughs> and then um, it sounds like an episode of Rick and Morty. Yeah, it, does. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Um, come on, Morty. Um, <laughs> oh, I don't know, Rick. <laughs> um, because obviously, back on Earth, yeah. they're like something's happening up there. We need to send someone to sort it out. Yeah. So there's this this counting clock. In terms of these people turning up, yeah, it's up. the repair team for the uh, for the harvester. For the harvester, that's yeah, right. the repair team that goes to the actual uh, the lunar module with a rifle. Yeah, <laughs> dude, they seriously that's like that's part of fixing the problem, <laughs> Brad. I swear, it's, it's open time. Hey, he's not going anywhere. And yeah. He just closes it up again. Yeah, <laughs> they but they like in, when you first see them when uh, he gets a message. We're sending up a repair team, and they they show you pictures of the three guys, and I'm like, yeah. those are the three roughest prison <laughs> like, prison yeah. guys. Yeah. They did not know how to repair arms. <laughs> yeah. No, that's yeah. it. Those They're here guys. to kick ass and chew bubble gum. You know, like my god. Um, and obviously there's this really great interaction between the two Sams because originally new Sams just like. Dude, you've been here three years. You can go. Like, I'm going to yeah. get you home. But old Sam is deteriorating at the rate of knots. Like, oh my <laughs> God. He's... That's, I wrote that down. It's a really powerful scene when yeah. they're trying to decide who's going to go home. Mm. And it's and again, it's that, like, you care equally for both of these completely different well, guys. That, it, but that, yeah, they kind of, by the end of that time, they've realized that, hang on, we are the same guy. Yeah. And then, then it just come, becomes down to this reality thing. It's like, well, we can send you home, but you're probably not going to be dead before you get there. I can just put you back where I found you. Mm. And I can go home. And then the repair guys are going to turn up with the new Sam and they're not going to know any different. Yeah. yeah. Until the last, what, 30 seconds of the film, which I thought was really cool. So good. Yeah, Done that was, really that was, that was probably well. one of the best parts of the film, I thought. Yeah. Was wow. that last 30 seconds. <laughs> I went, oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, nice. And that's the oh, thing. Yeah. I mean, it really turns into an us versus them. And, you know, mm. we need to, like, we need to get this out there. Like, this is, this is bad. This is, yeah. This is really bad. There's so many other films, though, that it's like obviously drawing from. So it's like, it's so 2001. <laughs> there's The Shining. There's also, like, you know, Alien with, yeah. you know, the corporation thing and, <laughs> and all, all this sort of stuff. And it's like, so there's lots of, like, almost homages to these yeah, other so films. You know what? It's, a, it's, it's kind of a bit like Oblivion. Uh, oh, cool. <laughs> my God. I don't know. Is Oblivion better, though? So like, for those playing at hang home... On, did Moon copy Oblivion? I think <laughs> it did, yeah. I think it did. <laughs> so <laughs> This had to be brought up eventually. Brad, you haven't seen Oblivion? No. Don't. Like, right, so strap basically... Strap yourself in, Brad. Dude, well, it's it's get, awesome. To, this is how it went, right? One of the best movies I've ever seen. I'm like, oh, look, I don't, I don't mind a Tom Cruise film as much as the next bloke, right? Tom Cruise films are usually pretty good. I sat down and I'm like, oh, let's give this Oblivion a crack. Do you remember the conversation we had about Point Break and Fast and the Furious? Mm. Yeah. 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 We're about to have another one. Yeah, (laughs) it's going to be pretty similar. But it's not the same conversation about Point Break and Point Break. No. No, no, no. But there was only one Point Break. (laughs) Yeah, it's the similarities between the two films. It's too close for comfort. Oblivion, Oblivion is like 
Tom Cruise and his wife. Irrelevant. Another woman. No, it wasn't his wife. It, it was, was his just wife, another, just was, a, yeah, another but worker. They were, they were banging, but it was yeah. I don't think they were. Oh, was and that, they're on what's s- her name that English girl. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and they're on some <laughs> some foreign planet, and they're harvesting. Uh, no, they're on they're Earth. They're on Earth. They're on Earth. Oh, this okay. It's just really. Fucking... Everyone else is off Earth. They're on Earth. All oh, right, yeah. and the corporation is overseeing them and them protecting Earth, and and it, and they're harvesting from the ocean. Yeah, and it goes on and on, and I'm sitting there going, I can I can see the links here. I'm like, this bloke's a fucking clone. <laughs> yeah. they've just made mo- oh, and, and I got uh, so angry so quickly yeah. and then the next time I was talking to you Timmy I'm like dude I saw Oblivion the other day and he's like oh yeah so that was pretty good, pretty good. <laughs> yeah. and I'm like that's, oh, the, vo- that's the voice I used I was <laughs> like fire and brimstone I'm like dude you've got to see Moon Moon is even better it's the same film and it was probably like three days later I'm like Dude, mood was awesome. <laughs> I'm really sorry. So, <laughs> Oblivion was is it, terrible. Is it like a complete copy? Like, uh, what is Almost. it? Uh, like it's Los Ojos and... And Open Your Eyes. And Open Your Eyes. Yeah. Which, no, is so, not... which is so exactly the same to the point where Tom Cruise is the only... No, sorry, not, not Open Your Eyes. That's Abra Los Ojos. Yeah. Vanilla Sky. Oh, Vanilla Sky. Vanilla yeah. Sky, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Where it's literally exactly the yeah. same film. Uh, no, Oblivion... Take Spanish Dude out, insert Tom Cruise, use same actors. Yeah, so yeah Oblivion... sort of. Yeah, Oblivion sort of. brings in some like post-apocalyptic stuff like there's like a a gang of humans that have remained on earth mm, that uh, are rising up to the conspiracy and, and Morgan, the clone, Morgan the clone Freeman thing is like the the sorry spoilers for people haven't seen it. The, who cares the, it's yeah, crap the clone thing is is the final spoiler so, yeah. so it's kind of mixed you, with your like standard Hollywood kind of yeah, uh, because he's restricted chill. to a certain area of Earth to monitor. Ah, so it is. And, there's, and from his him. ship shuts down if he can't. Correct. If he crosses uh, so it and... he, he is monitoring all these bits of Earth. It's obviously a clone. Sounds there. like this movie I've seen called Moon. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 but yeah. not as good. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Oblivion, there's plenty of sandwich eating during that. You know, it's... <laughs> hey, <laughs> no, I was too angry to eat sandwiches during Oblivion. Re- really quickly, I uh, sandwiches. <laughs> 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 I made them prior to watching Oblivion. <laughs> Just so I could peg him at the telly. <laughs> in, ter- in terms of the end, sorry. No, go go. Okay, in terms of the ending of Moon, we'll just get back to Moon because fuck oblivion. It's yes. Bad, um, yeah. <laughs> the we should call this episode "Fuck Oblivion." Not Oblivion. Not Oblivion. <laughs> um, yeah, Brad, what you saying before in terms of the ending working really well? The good thing about that is that you have no idea how it's going to end up. Like you mm. don't know. Like you're like, or you know, this may not be a happy ending in the end. Yeah. Like yeah. It, it could be. Because obviously you just hear like snippets of TV news and whatnot of it's like ten who seconds. Is this guy, yeah. yeah. Like, but yeah. one of the lines is like that. You know, the Sam Bell, uh, Sam Bell clone is giving evidence in court. Mm. But then I love it. You get another perspective. <laughs> yeah. uh, he's obviously from, an alien. He's an alien. Oh, no, it's, he's an illegal alien, or he's a he's a guy out of his mind, or something like that. <laughs> and that's all you get. Like these two little lines. It's yeah. like bang. That's Dumb. perfect. But, but the it, set. The sad part is, in three years, that guy's fucked anyway. Yeah. Like, he's a clone. But, but I think by that point, new Sam twigs to that, and he's like, this is going to happen to me in three years. Yeah. So he's going home to whistleblow. Yeah, like, he's exactly. not yeah. going home he, to meet his well, family. Well, by the end nah. of it, new Sam's become middle Sam, because there is a newer Sam. Oh, new the newer Yeah, the point Sam. is, he wants to uncover this, because yeah. obviously no one on Earth knows what's going on, Yeah, yeah. Like, and, and what's actually well, taking place. Very little people. Hey, Timmy, really quickly, I wanted to know, I want to know what that the piece of terrible CGI that you were referring to. It was when, the, um, just before he jumps in the, the pod that they usually send the energy back to Earth on, um, he changes the coordinates of one of the harvesters and it runs into... Oh, runs I know into, what you're talking about. Yeah, it runs into <laughs> that bloody antenna that they found that's blocking the signal, jamming the signal. And just when it hits it... Oh, it looks terrible. Yeah. <laughs> it, looks, it was like What's Nintendo up? 64. Great I'll be yeah. honest, I'm so swept up in this film by that stage, I... I didn't pick it. But though. that's no. why I noticed it, because it was obvious CGI, yeah. I suppose. It was the yeah. only part where I'm like, I don't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> but, Out of money. But that, that just stage. proves that the rest of it was flawless. <clears throat> yeah, you know? so flawless. I, I just feel like... <coughs> now, the only the only other thing, I, I think we're running out of time, but the only other thing I can I just want to bring up is how much I really enjoy the music of this film. Um, yeah, nice. And I think or that, lack of. Yeah, that's what <laughs> I was going to bring up, the lack of. <laughs> but... Just because those those couple of moments, I think we were talking about before, you know, when, when Gertie's, you know, telling him the stuff, music there, and just, I don't know, it, the music in this film really, I don't know, it really... It adds without yeah. being overbearing. Yeah, I, I, suppose, didn't, I didn't even notice the music. I noticed there was a lot of no music, a yeah. lot of foley. See? 
exactly what I'm talking about. Well, that's it. I mean, the music, job. the music yeah. really only comes in when it really needs to add, like, because the whole thing's silent, which I guess, uh, which is great, because it really adds to that it's that isolation, yeah. that isolation, it's, that solitude. It's not speed. It's not speed. Dun, 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 <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Yeah, it's not. It's certainly not speed. But whenever there's or something, Highlander. Yeah, or a thump and Queen's. That's it. <laughs> Whenever, the whenever there's something like that's really emo- yeah, emotionally devastating, that's when the music plays, and even then, it's really subtle. Yeah, mm. you know, it's like it's really good. But uh, um, the only other thing I just wanted to bring up was, is Gertie conscious? Well, yeah, I kind of asked the same thing. Like, I'm like, is Gertie, Gertie emotionally invested in yeah, Sam? Gertie, well, to I- me, doesn't seem like a robot. To me, he seemed there was something about him that, he, as the film was going on. He was finding himself in a real moral predicament mm. and he navigated his way through that somehow. And Sh- instead of doing, I don't know, because like he basically aided these two in terms of. That's ending, what I'm talking in about, terms though. In of ending like, this whole thing. Like, Gertie's, a, Gertie's was, a product of the company, but he is there to serve Sam yeah. the whole time. So he's mm. helping him. So he's protocol. Because that's part of his So he's been programmed to help Sam. Yeah. But surely there's something written in his data that says... Don't dude, tell him dude, about the clones. Dude, this is a fucking secret. Don't yeah, but look, <laughs> I don't thought want that, this getting back to Earth. I thought that too. <laughs> and then I also thought about it. It's like, well, what does it matter? He's never leaving. He's yeah. never contacting anybody. If they're all going to so die, they're going to die. Env- if he eventually works out that he is a clone, so what? Maybe, well, maybe maybe Gertie wants to die. <laughs> right. No, 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 no. Hear me out. Hear me out. Why would Gertie help shut down the whole operation if Gertie's sick and tired of the whole thing? He doesn't want to be on the frigging moon what, what for another wanna... second. He's like, I've had enough. Shut me down. Is Gertie skynetting? Is he becoming self-aware? Like, this is... Mm. Like, is he, is he d- deliberately trying to sabotage this whole thing? Like, is, is, well, he, is he sick of seeing this whole process? I still, well, maybe to a degree. I still feel like he's, his prime directive is to help yeah. Sam because right at the end there, he's like, oh, would it help if I wipe my memory? Like, oh, yeah. And totally get rid of who he's been. Yeah, I don't know. It's and just... and Sam's like, oh, would you do that for me, bud? Like, <laughs> are you sure? That's like a big That's deal. A big thing, yeah. And he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm here to help you, man. Wow. That's awesome. And then he, and he totally does, and he goes, goes back goes from that like blank face to the happy face again yeah mm. he's just like holy shit you had an accident like yeah. <laughs> yeah and he's just like right totally back. taken one for a mate yeah mm. oh so beautiful <laughs> <laughs> I love I haven't seen Warcraft but I love you Duncan Jones <laughs> <laughs> oh no alright so um Overall, I think, you know, it sounds like we all enjoyed it. We're going to, I think we should get into the San Dimas scale of whatever was, rating is out. Give quite us a frankly, run, there was absolutely no way I was going to make a sandwich during this film. <laughs> Not the chance. No. no. Uh, I, am I going first? Do you want to run, it, run us through the San Dimas scale first for those oh, yes, who sorry. might be a first time listener? I always forget this bit. Yeah. Uh, so the San Dimas scale, if you, this is your first listen, uh, we rate all our films on a percentage scale. Uh, compared to Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, 100%. So we could have a film that's substantially worse than Bill and Ted's. It's going to get a lower percentage. However, a film may be better, so it may have a higher percentage. So we can go into the, you know, 100 plus percent. Uh, Tim, this was your film. Would you like to go first? Sure. Um, I would I would give it 130 Percent, nice, quite nice. easily. Is that our first over a hundred percent? No, it isn't. No, no. I think oh, I, no. I gave speed, speed yeah. like a hundred and ten percent. I was yeah. like, but I would, I would rank this. I don't even know if that's enough to be honest. I'm still trying to feel my way around this scoring system, but it's <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's way better than Bill and Ted yeah. for me. Yeah. We could revise it perhaps in a year's time. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so any- yeah. Look, I, same deal. Like. Brilliant film. I, any movie that uses models instead of CGI, it like gets me all gooey. So, yeah, I, I I'm probably in the same. I'll probably go. I probably don't. I probably wouldn't go 130, percent but it'd be close. Just for giggles, I'm gonna go with 100 and 125, percent. But again, it's, it kind of feels like it's not enough. But yeah, no, I'll stick with 125 percent, and definitely not making any sandwiches on this one. Nice. So, Bradley, I'm gonna say one sandwich. One sandwich. Okay, okay. Ooh. I don't think I love this film as much as you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Look, put it this way: did did I enjoy watching it? Yeah. Would I watch it again? Probably not. Mm. I've seen it though, and I like I like the little bits and pieces. A lot of bits and pieces I did like, 
But as a whole, as a film, yeah, I probably won't see it again. So I'm going to say 80 and one sandwich. Did, did Oblivion sound good? <laughs> no, well, I don't need to see Oblivion. I've seen the movie. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. yeah. Ah, touche. <laughs> Al. I gave this film 160%. Well played. Oh, yeah. well played. I love this and film a lot. Do you need and, to change your underwear? Right? And like you said, Tim, <laughs> that may not be high enough. Yeah. I, oh, I, mean, I love this film. I was very... Like, I don't want to be one of those guys that just starts giving crazy percentages. So yeah. That's why I... But this would be a good film to do it in. Yeah, I know. I know. It's great. It's smart. It's subtle. It's, it's original. It's original. It's sci-fi. Look, I'm mm. sure to a degree it's not original. We'll have a bunch of people go, oh, no... You know, you guys are crapping on about how Oblivion's the same. Well, Moon's the same as, you know. Yeah. I, I really liked the very simple storyline of this. Simple. It's not complicated whatsoever. Low key. Yeah. We've we've probably talked about it and turned it into something complicated. But realistically, yeah. the storyline, if you're going to give it as a, as a rundown, you could almost do it in two sentences sort of yeah. thing. Like really simple, big twist, and we're there. Okay. I got that. I like That's, that. Yeah. Well... Yeah. That wraps up Moon for us. Well done, everybody. We've got to select a movie for next week. Who's who, who is it? Uh, I think it's Al. I believe it's my turn. Oh, no, no. You, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, yeah sorry, I mm. thought it was you, Slim. No, 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 no not, not yet. Not, not yet. Turn. Thank God. <laughs> we, 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 we're one episode off having to deal with whatever this just, guy just is. Wait, yeah. Just wait for Speed 2, boys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, again, I've gone for possibly one of my favourite films. Mm. Uh, one of... It's it's claimed as possibly the first summer blockbuster. It's got to be Con Air. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's not Con Air, I'm sorry. <laughs> maybe, maybe next time I come around, I'll Ooh. do Con Air. Uh, no, I've gone for... I'm going a little bit older. I've gone for 1975's Jaws. Great film. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks for coming. Thanks for listening. Uh, this has been the San Dimas School of Film. My name's Al. Brad. Jules. I really don't, I don't like this going around saying our names. It just feels weird to me. My but name anyway, is I'm Tim. Julian. Um, if uh, you have any questions, complaints, which is most likely, um, or anything else, you can contact Cause us. Because it's at, the internet. Correct. You can mm-hmm. contact us at sandemusfilm at gmail.com. Or, yeah. or mum, you could probably just text us. Yeah. None of us, <laughs> I don't think any of us have Twitter. We're all on Facebook, but we, we don't do anything on there. Yeah, my name's not even the same. As my real name on yeah. Facebook. Yeah, so anonymity. Just yeah, send us an email. Thanks for listening, everybody. All right.